Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to bestow his mercy and favor upon this blessed Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And first and foremost, I want to thank the brothers for inviting me because this is from the Sunnah Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam that he mentioned if you do not thank the people, do you not thank Allah? So it's imperative upon us whenever the opportunity to adhere to a Sunnah we should hasten to do so. And gratitude is something that many of us, may Allah make us better, we find ourselves being very neglectful when the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bestowed upon us and our families. Sometimes we anticipate certain things that take place in our life and we anticipate being grateful if those things manifest themselves. But along the way, Allah continues to bestow countless favors and bounties upon this blessed Ummah and we fall short in showing gratitude. Now my purpose for coming to the UK was specifically to target the youth. Because many of the youth today, and there's a commonality that circulates amongst many masajid around the world, many communities around the world, that many of the people, preferably the Muslims, are losing their babies. And also, alhamdulillah, this is also a reunion for me. Because I sat in this very masjid back in like 2009. And I recently came home for spending nine years in federal prison for a conspiracy that had very little to do with me. But it was a nitma from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he placed me in an environment where I was able to increase, I was able to benefit, and I was able to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes from the outside looking in, we see things as a hardship. But from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes we're put in situations where we're able to fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that we wouldn't. In an environment where there is no hardship and difficulty. So it's very important that you understand that the goal and the objective of the Muslim in general is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed a paradise for the believers. And this is our goal. So it's important that we don't get sidetracked and become complacent with the affairs of the dunya and start leaving off that which is way more praiseworthy and way more virtuous. And that is the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created solely for the believers. Now, like the brother mentioned, in regards to being mindful of this blessed deen of Islam, this religion of truth, this religion of unity, this religion of justice. All of the things that people who don't ascribe to Islam try to establish by way of worldly affairs. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us everything we need. Everything we need to establish these things. And in no way, shape, or form, or any hour of the day, we should ever forget that. So just to establish how blessed we are, 
by show of hands, inshallah, how many of your brothers in here were born and raised Muslim? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Now how many brothers such as myself was guided to this blessed deen by way of darkness and ignorance and lack of understanding of purpose of life? Alhamdulillah. So the reality is that it doesn't matter how we got here, we're here. Sahih? Doesn't matter if you were born and raised, cultivated and nurtured upon Islam, or you were guided from darkness and ignorance. From the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all landed here as brothers in Islam. We all landed here as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and adherents to the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we've established a commonality that we share in regards of blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us. Those of you who were born and raised Muslim, conceived and carried in the womb of a believer, brought into this world, and nurtured and cultivated upon he raised upon the security of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a favor from your Lord before you even knew who your Lord was. So you truly have a reason to forever be grateful. How many of you by show of hands were raised by both your parents? Alhamdulillah. Wallahi, I mean, where I come from, y'all like superheroes. Wallahi. Now, another reason why you should be grateful in the way that you express or implement this gratitude is by being dutiful to your parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he placed this right to be dutiful to the parents right after his right to be worshipped alone. So many of you who raise your hands, may Allah continue to preserve you. You've been given something to us that came from darkness, especially the environment, the community I grew up in. Giving you something that the average kid in my community will probably harm you just out of jealousy. Just out of jealousy that you have both your parents. There's a certain type of mental anguish that comes with a child who was raised either in a single home or no parents at all. How many by show of hands were raised by one single parent? Alhamdulillah. And a lot of work for carrying the burden of two parents. And how many such as myself was raised with no parents? You see what we getting at? My grandparents raised me. It wasn't their responsibility. But they were my parents. And I treated them better than I probably would have treated my parents. But they were deserving of it. For taking the responsibility for two people who brought me into this world. My father was never around. I met him at age 33. May Allah guide him. He's very sick right now. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him to his land. My mother was also a victim of the streets. Involved in numerous things that is in complete opposition of Islam. 
And through the course of that, she fell victim of drug addiction. So therefore, my grandmother took me from her when I was three months old. Alhamdulillah, she's been clean for over two decades, but I still pray that Allah guide her to the sun. As for my grandparents, my grandmother, when I came home from prison, she was fighting stage four cancer. Rahim Allah, she died at 91 years old. She took her shahada before she died. My grandfather, Rahim Allah, he died at 96 years old. He took his shahada before he died. So for those of you who had your parents and remain dutiful to your parents, the likelihood of you meeting your parents again in Jannah is way more higher than mine. But by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah to better Allah I have an opportunity to meet my grandparents in the paradise that Allah prepared for only the believers. I grew up in an environment that was plagued by drugs, violence, murder, rape, everything that you probably heard about, read about, but never seen. Because looking across this room, I know my kind. I know those that's in darkness. There's a certain look in your eyes that would tell you that you've seen things that are unspeakable. And the sad part about it, when you see it consistently, it becomes normal. And that's sick in itself. But for all of you, raise your hands. We were born and raised Muslim. Got both of your parents. I don't see it in your eyes. So what that tells me is, any choices that you make to fall into this lifestyle that you were not taught and you never seen, it means you ended up there by choice, not by circumstance. And when you stand before your laws of jail on Yom Kiyama, you will have to be held accountable for decisions that you made. And the hardship and the adversity that comes with that choice, you will only have you and yourself to blame. You will not be able to look to your parents and blame them for anything because they didn't raise you that way. You will not be able to look to your peers because you had no business following them anyway because they wasn't raised that way. And a lot of the youth are being lost by following each other. Y'all following each other. You won't be able to blame Shake Google, they've been Twitter, El Instagram. You won't be able to blame him neither. So it's important that you understand that Allah has favored you. No one's telling you not to be children. No one's telling you not to enjoy life. But enjoy what Allah provided for you. Because he gave you everything you need so that you can meet him one day with your good deeds outweighing your bad. But this worldly life it is a trap, yeah, you want. For those of you who know about me, know that I had a very extensive career in the music business. I performed and toured with the likes of many A-list artists, I rub shoulders with many people in sports and entertainment. And the reality is, it is a lifestyle that many of the inhabitants of that lifestyle are not the most happiest people. Many of them may appear to be happy while the camera's on. But when the camera's off, the reality of the lifestyle that they chose is gradually eating away at them. So they become soulless and they become heartless. And the only thing that keeps them alive is those young and impressionable people like yourself who feed into this stuff. 